Hello, my name is Dr. Faria Ramey from the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the University of Maryland in Baltimore, Maryland. I would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for inviting me to speak regarding our publication titled Outcomes After Liquid Nitrogen Spray Cryotherapy in Barrett's Esophagus Associated High-Grade Dysplasia and Intramucosal Adenocarcinoma, Five-Year Follow-Up. My plan is to discuss the study with you and provide a demonstration of the liquid nitrogen spray cryotherapy procedure. Endoscopic eradication therapy in the treatment of Barrett's high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal adenocarcinoma has led to a paradigm shift in the management of early esophageal neoplasia. Endoscopic eradication therapy with endoscopic resection and ablation is now the primary treatment modality for treatment of Barrett's high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal adenocarcinoma. Liquid nitrogen spray cryotherapy is a non-contact method of ablation in which medical grade liquid nitrogen at a temperature of negative 196 degrees Celsius is applied through a low pressure spray catheter to targeted tissue. It is a safe, well-tolerated, and effective therapy in the treatment of Barrett's high-grade dysplasia. My colleague and co-author, Dr. Bruce Greenwald, will provide a demonstration of the spray cryotherapy procedure. I'm Dr. Bruce Greenwald, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, liquid nitrogen spray cryotherapy. This is the liquid nitrogen spray cryotherapy device called TrueFreeze by CSA Medical and it contains a tank of medical grade liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius and the control mechanisms to allow a low pressure spray to be delivered through a catheter. The control panel is here where we measure and monitor the uh, flow of liquid nitrogen. Catheter is here. Prior to performing spray cryotherapy we do a routine upper endoscopy and identify the area that we want to treat. Next, we pass a stainless steel guide wire down into the stomach and then use this cryo decompression tube, which is a modified type of oral gastric tube. This is placed over the wire into the stomach and the wire is then removed. This tube is used to decompress the evaporated nitrogen gas that forms as the liquid nitrogen spray increases in temperature. This decompression tube is hooked up to a canister and there's an included suction device within the con console that maintains suction throughout the treatment. To perform liquid nitrogen spray cryotherapy, we take the catheter and insert it through this working channel of a standard upper endoscope. Typically, I will use a distal end attachment to aid in the cryotherapy treatment and we'll insert this until the catheter is just barely extending past the tip of the scope. When we're ready to spray we'll initiate suction first while a nurse is monitoring suction in the patient. Next we'll press on the spray cryotherapy and you'll see that as the catheter cools liquid nitrogen will exit the tip of the catheter. This is sprayed on the targeted area of interest, typically for 20 seconds, with a timer beginning once we see complete freeze of the targeted tissues. The aim of this study was to assess long-term outcomes after spray cryotherapy in patients with Barrett's high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal adenocarcinoma with five-year follow-up from time of initial eradication of high-grade dysplasia with spray cryotherapy. Long-term follow-up for this treatment modality beyond two years has been lacking. Long-term follow-up after endoscopic ablation with spray cryotherapy is important and clinically relevant given that recurrence of dysplasia and intestinal metaplasia after successful eradication is not uncommon. This is a single-center retrospective study drawn from a prospective database of patients with Barrett's high-grade dysplasia an intramucosal adenocarcinoma treated at the University of Maryland Medical Center with spray cryotherapy and followed with surveillance endoscopy with biopsy for up to five years. Patients with intramucosal adenocarcinoma completely removed with endoscopic resection were included. 
This is a short video demonstrating spray cryotherapy of Barrett's esophagus. This is a patient with long segment Barrett's esophagus with high grade dysplasia. The spray catheter is seen extending from the end of the scope. We can see the tissue freezing as liquid nitrogen is sprayed on it. The tissue is frozen for 20 seconds and then is allowed to thaw. After thawing, freezing is repeated for another 20 seconds. This process is repeated until all tissue is treated. The tissue appears hyperemic after successful cryotherapy. Eradication rates at three and five years follow-up are shown here. The x-axis shows results and the y-axis shows percentages. At three years, complete eradication of high-grade dysplasia was 96%, complete eradication of dysplasia was 94%, and complete eradication of intestinal metaplasia was 82%. Similarly, at five years, complete eradication of high-grade dysplasia was 93%, eradication of dysplasia was 88%, and eradication of intestinal metaplasia was 75%. Durability of response was calculated as the percentage of patients maintaining remission without retreatment. For high-grade dysplasia, durability of response was 82 to 84%. For dysplasia, it was 75 to 80%. And for intestinal metaplasia, it was 65 to 73%. As we can see, the durability of response for spray cryotherapy is maintained at five years. Incidence rates of recurrent intestinal metaplasia, dysplasia, high-grade dysplasia, and adenocarcinoma per person year of follow-up after initial complete eradication of intestinal metaplasia were 12%, 4%, and 1% per person year for the five-year cohort. High-grade dysplasia was discovered in two cases later than four years after initial eradication. 4% of patients progressed to adenocarcinoma despite treatment. One patient required esophagectomy, the others were successfully treated with endoscopic therapy. In conclusion, this is the first study to examine the long-term success of spray cryotherapy in patients with Barrett's high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal adenocarcinoma. We show that spray cryotherapy can successfully eradicate Barrett's dysplasia and intestinal metaplasia with low risk of progression to adenocarcinoma. Like other ablation modalities, risk of recurrence is not uncommon, but allowing for interval touch-up therapy, the majority of patients maintain eradication of high-grade dysplasia at five years. Continued endoscopic surveillance is still necessary due to the risk of dysplasia recurrence up to four years after initial eradication. Thank you for listening and we welcome any input and comments from our GIE readers.